The St. John of Damascus Orthodox Educational Initiative presents the Damascene Podcast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. This is Father John Summers, the headmaster of the St. John of Damascus Orthodox Educational Initiative, with our second recording on the uh, book of Daniel. In this case, it's chapter 1. Um, So in chapter 1 we read, In the third year of the reign of Joachim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Jerusalem, and besieged it. (coughs) And the Lord gave into his hand Joachim, king of Judah, and part of the vessels of the house of God, and brought them into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God, and the king told Ashmanez, his chief eunuch, to bring in some of the captive children of Israel and of the seed of the kingdom and of the princes, young men in whom was no blemish and beautiful in appearance and skilled in all wisdom and possessing knowledge and acquainted with prudence and who had ability to stand in the house before the king. And the king gave commandment to teach them the learning and language of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily portion from the king's table and from the wine which he drank and gave orders to nourish them three years, and that afterwards they should stand before the king. Now these were among them of the children of Judah, Daniel and Ananias, and Azarias and Misael. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names, to Daniel, Baltazar, and to Ananias, Sedrach, and to Misael, Misak, and to Azarias, Abednego. And Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's table, nor with the wine of his drink, and he entreated the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and compassion with the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your meat and your drink, lest he see your countenance as gloomy in comparison of the young men your equals. So shall ye endanger my head to the king. And Daniel said to Amosad, whom the chief of the eunuchs had appointed over Daniel, Ananias, Misael, and Azarias, prove now thy servants ten days, and let them give us pulse, and let us eat, and let us drink water, and let our countenances be seen by thee, and the countenances of the children that eat at the king's table, and deal with thy servants according as thou shalt see. And he hearkened to them, and proved them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and stouter in flesh than the children that fed at the king's table. So Amasad took away their supper and the wine of their drink and gave them pulse. And as for these four children, God gave them understanding and prudence in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And at the end of the days, after which the king had given orders to bring them in, then the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king spoke with them, and there were not found out of them at all any like Daniel and Ananias and Misael and Azarias, and they stood before the king. And in every matter of wisdom and knowledge wherein the king questioned them, he found them ten times wiser than all the enchanters and sorcerers that were in all his kingdom. And Daniel continued till the first year of King Cyrus. End quote. The third year of the reign of Joachim king of Judah was 606 B.C., at, first two, at verse 2, we see that the Lord gave into his hand Joachim, king of Judah. We have to pay close attention to the phrase, the Lord gave into his hand. The people of God were given over to Nebuchadnezzar on account of their sins. Of this, St. Hippolytus writes, quote, These words, and the Lord gave, are written that no one, in reading the introduction to the book, may attribute their capture to the strength of the captors and the slackness of their chief. End quote. This connects with what we said previously regarding the theme of the book. God himself works through human history, guiding it. The causes of the events of history are, at bottom, spiritual. As I think I have mentioned elsewhere, I emphatically recommend that you all read the article, <coughs> uh, The Orthodox Doctrine of Causality, causality excuse me, by St. Nikolai Vilamidovich. The Jews end up in Babylon, then, due to their sins, and for their correction. There is something in verse 2 regarding this. We see it says that God gave part 
of the vessels of the house of God over to Nebuchadnezzar. Again, St. Hippolytus is very helpful here. He says, quote, It is well said with part, for the deportation was for the correction, not the ruin of the whole nation, that there might be no misapplication of the cause. End quote. When the Lord chastises, he does not do so because he wishes for our destruction. Rather, just as a loving father, so too the Lord chastises his people for their correction. So, we have Daniel and his three friends, Ananias, Azarias, and Misael, all members of the tribe of Judah, who, due to their royal ancestry, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar wished, or wishes to have brought into the company of his wise men. Thus, he has them learn the Babylonian language and literature. Further, while they are living in the palace, they are given a daily provision of meat and wine from the king's table. In verse 8, we read, quote, And Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's table, nor with the wine of his drink, and he entreated the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Commenting on this, St. Hippolytus writes, quote, O blessed are they who thus kept the covenant of the fathers, and transgressed not the law given by Moses, but feared the God proclaimed by him. These, though captives in a strange land, were not seduced by delicate meats, nor were they slaves to the pleasures of wine, nor were they caught by the bait of princely glory. But they kept their mouth holy and pure, that pure speech might proceed from pure mouths, and praise with such mouths the, the Heavenly Father." End quote. The food at the king's table would have been blessed in the, temp the, in the presence of idols, and of course it would have been the tastiest food possible. Daniel and his companions resolved then not to defile themselves with the table of the king. This gives us a pattern to follow. We often feel the, pres the pressures of the world to sin. There is pressure at work, pressure from friends, pressure even from family sometimes. Yet, just as Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself, so too must we have a strong resolve not to give way to sin and pleasure. Daniel asks the king's uh, chief of the eunuchs for beans and water instead. The chief doesn't want to give him such simple fare, lest they become weak and he incur the wrath of the king. Notice, though, Daniel's faith. He asks that they be given such fare for ten days, knowing that God will give his grace, and with his grace, his strength. And sure enough, it works out just as Daniel knew it would. Not only were they still strong, they are, not, they are now stronger than those who had eaten meat and drink, and drank wine, excuse me, the whole time. The chief of the eunuchs, from that point forward, feeds them with beans and water. So what do we see so far? we see the faith and resolve of Daniel, and Ananias, Azarias, and Misael. We see how God preserves those who believe in him and fear him. And notice what he says, or what it says in verse 17. And as for these four children, God gave them understanding and prudence in all, wis in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. By his grace, God gives them wisdom and understanding, so much so that we read, in every matter of wisdom and knowledge wherein the king questioned them, he found them ten times wiser than all the enchanters and sorcerers than were in all his kingdom. And Daniel continued to the first year of King Cyrus. May we too emulate the holy prophet Daniel and the three children, in faith, in resolve, in fear, and in fasting, so that being enlightened by divine wisdom, we may acquire the kingdom of Christ. Amen. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. To donate to the initiative, please visit orthodoxlearninggoc.com slash donate. May God bless you. Have mercy.